Coach, open to statement and questions. First of all, appreciate you guys covering mm -hmm. the Sanford Bulldogs. We appreciate um, all the coverage that you guys afford us um, each and every year. We're excited um, for the 2024 season. Um, you get to this point of the year, you've had long um, spring training. Um, our training during the summer months went extremely well. We're heading into the final um, practices of week two of this particular camp. I believe things have gone well thus far. We're a little better this week than we were last week, um, and that's what you're hunting this time of year. But as always, um, especially this day and age in college football, you have a lot of, of new faces um, that, have, that join your program. Um, the big key during this time of year is for us to find out what they do well, um, be able to put them in the right positions, um, and give them the tools that they need to be successful. And I've always, this will be year 25 for me as a head football coach, year 10 at Sanford, so I'm very blessed. Um, but it, the biggest goal I think any coach has during this time of year um, is to find out what type of team you are. Um, and unfortunately, um, it takes a couple games some years to figure that out. So the faster you can find that out, get the right pieces in the right places, um, the better chances you have to be successful in the early part of the season. So um, that's what we're hunting. We have a big scrimmage um, to end the week on Friday, um, our first one of the season. So hopefully some questions will be answered at that point um, when we put the pads on. Coach, you said year 10. That's a special number to be at one school. What, what, what has it been like? I know it's kind of a broad question, but 10 years at one school, and what has Sanford meant to you? Uh, well, it's a, a very special place. And, and, you know, like I said earlier, I'm very fortunate to have been the head coach um, here for, for that period of time. There's been a lot of change in, in a lot of different areas. The landscape of college football has changed a great deal during, during my tenure here. Our university, you just look at it, has changed a lot um, during that time. But the one thing that stayed the same, um, I've been very blessed to have had a lot of great assistant coaches. Um, and then a lot of great young men that have come through this program um, that I'm very proud of the ones we have on the team currently, um, but I'm very proud of seeing the older guys and what they've become and the men that they've become. So, um, you know, hopefully um, they'll keep me around a little bit longer. But um, again, this job's a year to year job. And uh, right now we're focused on being the best version that we can of our team that we can possibly be in 2024. Talk about your scrimmage Friday. What are some of the big questions? You said there's questions to be you, know, you want answered. What are some of the things going in that you you feel like you need answered? Well, defensively, um, you know, we, we we got a lot of new faces, especially in the back end, and we got to figure out what some of those guys can do um, right there and, and get our rotation set in that area. Um, you know, our linebacking core when you had. Um, Jaden Mosley and, and Noah Martin there, I think they're two of, of one of the better linebacking cores in our league. Um, Jaden is, is being hampered um, with an ankle injury right now, so he hasn't been able to perform much. Um, so, you know, we, we have to work some depth at those spots. So we got to kind of figure out that, that number two position there. I think it's going to be a big question offensively. Um, you know, who's going to replace Jay Stanton? Um, who's I think it was here the he's been here nine of the ten years that I was here led the league in rushing last year. Um, right now um, we got Micah Kelly and Demonte Witherspoon battling that out to see who the starter is. Um, big question there is who's going to be number three, and then the question you guys ask is you know who's going to be the quarterback replace Michael Hires, um, and right now Nick Scalzo and Quincy Crittenden um, are battling for that position. Um, but I think the biggest thing is. Um, at a lot of the spots, you know, we, we know who's going to be run out there game one and, and take the one reps. Um, but the season's a long season, and um, we got to build quality depth. Um, and if, you know, you look two years ago when we had our championship season, um, I think one thing that helped us there, we were just really deep at all the positions. And when a guy went down, we were able to replace him with a very quality um, player there. So. Um, again, all the positions, they're all up for grabs, O-line, D-line, you name it. Um, we got to find some guys to step up there, but um, those will be probably the highlights of tomorrow's scrimmage. Uh, Coach, you mentioned the quarterback battle you have going on. What have you seen from those two guys, and what do you want to see from them when you have that first scrimmage on Saturday? Uh, just to, to be consistent and efficient in, in, in what they do, and I think um, you know that's been the – whenever you have new quarterbacks working with new receivers and. Um, and, and, and getting accustomed to being the guy 
Um, that's what you're looking for. Who managed the game well, who leads the team to scoring opportunities. And um, that's what we'll be looking looking for tomorrow. And it's, you know, it's kind of difficult sometimes during the practice settings um, from the standpoint is we have a lot of, we're rotating a lot of different guys at receiver. We're having to move people around due to some guys getting banged up through the course of practice. Um, so you got to fight through those things, you know, as well. And um, and then when you get into scrimmage situations, our quarterbacks are dead. We did not allow them to hit. And fortunately for us, both of those guys are good runners too. So um, you kind of, in a scrimmage, you take that away from them. They can't rely on that as much. So it's, it's good practice for them having to, to manage the game without you know, using one of their skill sets maybe to gain some yardage down the field. Coach, is there any position that maybe throughout fall camp so far that's kind of caught you by surprise or is moving quickly or more like, I guess, doing better than expected? Well, it's, it's early to, for me to really say, hey, you know, we're really fired up about this spot. But I tell you, one thing that has stood out is I just think our defensive line, that we're really deep there. Um, our depth at that position, right, a quality depth, um, I've been really pleased with that. And um, I would say, um, you know, that, that's a, a, a big thing. And I've always said, that you, you know, at the end of the day, all positions are extremely important. Um, but if you have a really good defensive line, you have two really good running backs and a good quarterback, you win a lot of football games. And right now, I think we have a really deep defensive line. Coach, this college football world's changing, like you said, and everything's about selling, even players that you have on your team. What's going on out there is pretty special. How are you parlaying them to recruiting guys? I know that's more of a school thing, not a football thing, but that's what you look at when you play in the, I believe, a new turf that we're going to check out today. Tell me about what's happening at Sanford. And I wanted to kind of double question is, are you parlaying this NCAA run and kind of just exposure for Sanford in general for you guys? Well, first of all, let me say this on the NIL. At our level, it is not as big as it is at the Power Four or the I guess the Power Four group of five. I mean, you know, we're we're trying to make budget. We're trying to have enough money to buy you know good equipment for our guys. So um, it goes on a little bit, but not what you hear and read about at the larger mm -hmm. Power Power Four schools right there. So. Um, it, that part, it really hadn't changed that much for me in my recruiting. You're, you're always selling experience, okay, when, when, you, when you recruit people, okay. Academic experience, which here, you know, we're second to none. Football experience, um, the community experience. And I think with what's going on um, on our practice field with our new recreation facility that will be open um, at the end of, or the beginning of this season, <clears throat> football season, the new turf, you know, it just shows a commitment to the overall experience that a student, student athlete will have at Sanford. Um, so I think that's going to be really big in coming years as far as the recruiting process goes for recruiting the right fit here at Sanford University. How was the basketball run? Did you guys get exposure with that or anything kind of cross over? Well, I, I don't know. I, I think at the end of the day, just the exposure of Sanford being you know, on, on the big stage and being on ESPN and going across the ticker and people talking about it. Um, that's always beneficial to everyone who works or goes to Sanford. Um, just from the, you know, the exposure um, of that is, is you just can't put a price tag on it. I mean, you think back um, to the money games that we played over the years and, you know, you're beating Florida State in the fourth quarter, you're tied with Florida in the fourth quarter and everybody on the all the college people are talking about it on all the networks. You know, maybe it, it may only been five or ten minutes of fame for, for the old Sanford Blue and Red, um, but you can't put a price tag on the notoriety of the basketball run we had last year. There's some new faces on the team too, you know, some younger guys coming in. What have you seen out of them and how have they been adjusting to the speed of college ball? Um, well, th that's a great question. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of transfers who have played at other schools. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that know the ropes, if you will. They know what it's like to go through training camp at a high level, um, but, but they're learning how to do it our way. And, I, and I've always said our practices are the most important thing we do. The way we practice is a little, maybe a little different than other places. So they've called on well. The summer was a great starting point for that. Um, but this year, you know, we, we have, I thought we really signed a good freshman class, okay? And, and we haven't done that in a couple years. 
um, due to people leaving and having to get more experienced players in. And, and I've been really pleased with the way some of the, the, the freshmen have, have been playing. Um, one guy that stands out the, probably the most right now is Preston Bird, a wide receiver who's had a good camp up to this point. Um, but again, we haven't put the pads on yet, so after the scrimmage um, on Friday, I'll be able to give you a little bit better rundown on the new guys on the team. Back to the quarterback position for a second. Have, have you ever been a guy that, that goes in with a plan of playing two quarterbacks, or are you, are you kind of the – got to find one type of, of approach? You know, it, it doesn't matter to me. I've played three before. Um, you know, I, 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 what, we're going to do whatever we need to do to give us the best chance to win. Okay, and, and that's the approach that I go in at every position. Um, you know, it's nice to have one guy because you don't have to split the reps up at practice. Um, but, but, but then again, you know, you got to have good depth back there too. And if we have two guys that are capable of leading this team to victories each and every week, we'll play two. And if we can find a third or fourth one, we'll play all them as well. But um, um, I, I think that the, the, um, the, the competition will take care of itself over the over the course of training camp. And, and how, how much has Quincy grown as a quarterback since that first year, since that freshman year when you, you were thrown in the you know playoff game and the end of the season? How much has he grown just as a quarterback since that time? Well, let, let's go back to his redshirt freshman year that you guys didn't even know that he was probably on our football team. Um, he has grown a, a ton during that time. Um, I remember throwing him out there in, a, in, a, in a, a skeleton situation, and he'll be embarrassed for me to tell the story. But um, we go out there for for six straight plays. He he read the he didn't read one of them correctly at all but he was throwing missiles all over the field. There had been balls thrown that hard in the history of Sanford football there at, at what was Cybert Stadium, now Pete Hanna Stadium. So he's come a long way since then. Um, but, you know, that, that run we had in 22 and, you know, having to go in in overtime and, and then, you know, being the guy in the, in the playoff game um, gave him valuable experience. And plus, we were able to see him in some game situations. So, grown a lot. Um, his family has uh, been very close to me. His brother played linebacker for me at Murray State. Um, so we're very blessed to have him. And, um, you know, he's just he's, he's a humble guy. Um, probably the biggest thing that, um, that he's grown at is he, 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 he talks more than he did the first year. The first year, I don't think he ever said one word the, the whole year that he was here. Now, um, now I'm getting at least two or three words out of him a day. Uh, Coach, going back to the defense, you had to replace your defense coordinator from last year. What excites you about Coach Braithwaite there and his system, as it seems it might be a little bit different than what you guys ran last year? Well, we, I think we will be a little bit different. And, um, you know, with, with Coach Boone, um, we were very successful with that defense. We were more of a, a, a three-man front team. And um, I hate to say we were bend but don't break. And, you know, we would bend, 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 and then we would make a goal line stand. So, you know, that was just kind of the way we played, you know. And, um, I, we're going to be, a, I think, a more attacking defense. Um, you know, we'll be more multiple with our three down and four down fronts. Um, and in what I saw out of the spring and thus far, that um, you know he he plays defense like I play offense, recklessly abandon all the time with blitzes and things of that nature. So I think we'll complement each other well. Um, the guys seem to um, have, have have you know rallied or behind him and that staff on on the defensive side. Um, so. You know, I really do, you know, the biggest thing I would say, I think we'll be more aggressive on that side. Now, we got to be able to execute aggressiveness, um, but I think that's the way we would like to play. Coach, you, you talk about learning more about this team, and you guys are going to be tested early going down to the Swamp Week 2. How much are you and the team just looking forward to that challenge and really seeing what this team is capable of? Well, I haven't even, you know, thought about, you know, the season. We're more worried about us right now. We are during the season as well. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing is that, I, I you know, I, you're, you overlook the most important game of the season, and that's that the, the first one, you know, right there. we we got to come out of the gates and play well. Um, you know, you go on the road to a team that um, is going to play their first ever FCS football game. Um, they have a really good coach who's very familiar with us, who's been the defensive coordinator um, at Mercer. Um, they have a whole new staff that we know nothing that they're going to do. 
Um, you throw them, t t you know, they've been a national power in Division II. Um, at Valdosta State in West Georgia, or the that's their that's the biggest rivalry game of the year. So that's my biggest rival. Going back as a player and coach, um, you know that's going to be a tough game, and um, and I, I hope that um, as we go through, our guys understand that, um, which will allow us to practice harder and better to be ready to play that open and ball game. Any? Uh... Advice: Some people are no-shows today for this pump pass and kick. I think they were a little nervous. What do you think? Any advice to us on, on, on what's going to go down today? What is this year five Just, that we've done on the say, the punt pass and kick? Yeah, Johnny's a no-show. Is is, is 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 um what year is this? Is um Joey? Joey hey, what year is this punt pass and kick? Uh, this is the sixth. Six year, year six. So we've been doing this for five years. Um, what I've seen in the five years, there's not much I can tell you guys to help you out. <laughs> there's been some pretty poor performances out there, just to be honest. Yeah. All right, well, thanks, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> Any advice for the rookies that are about to do it for the uh, first time? Just, hey, just kick it far and throw it far, okay? And don't listen to these other yahoos around here, okay? <laughs> they act like they're experts, but when you watch them, there'll be no intimidation factor whatsoever. I think we're good with that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you know I got to give you a hard time.